What's clear, shiny, hard, and commonly used in jewelry? Okay, diamond isn't wrong, but there's another answer too. This is the story of cubic zirconia. If you've ever been jewelry shopping on a budget, you've probably heard of cubic zirconia. It was one of the first diamond substitutes to be commercially available, and it remains popular today. At first glance, it has the characteristic look and sparkle of a diamond, at a fraction of the price. But what exactly is cubic zirconia? Well, zirconia simply means an oxide of the metal zirconium, but the cubic part is where the interesting material science comes in. Obviously, zirconia can be cut into a variety of shapes, most of which aren't cubes. The cubic term actually refers to the arrangement of atoms, which plays a big role in giving zirconia its diamond-like properties. Zirconia can be found in three polymorphs, meaning the shape of the atomic structure, but only the cubic form has optical properties like diamond. Part of the reason is that the cubic structure is highly optically isotropic, meaning the same in all directions. The tetragonal and monoclinic forms are less symmetric, and therefore lack the diamond-like uniformity and shine. The problem is, the cubic phase is only stable at extremely high temperatures, with the final phase transition occurring at over 2000 Celsius. These temperatures can be reached by a technique known as skull melting, but the problem is that these phase transitions occur in the other direction too. Cubic zirconia formed at very high temperatures will inevitably revert back to its other forms upon cooling. Since life at 2700 Celsius isn't exactly pleasant, we need to add what's known as a stabilizer to keep zirconia in the cubic phase, and how it's done is a great example of engineering at the atomic level. The most common stabilizer is yttria. Like zirconia, Yttria simply means an oxide of the metal yttrium. The yttrium ion in the oxide is 3 plus instead of the 4 plus of zirconium. This means the yttrium has basically lost one fewer electron than zirconium, making the ionic radius slightly larger. In addition, the arrangement of the oxygen atoms around the yttrium ion is very similar in structure to the arrangement of oxygen around zirconium ions, just with some oxygen missing. This stable arrangement of oxygen around yttrium and the larger ionic radius act as a lock for the cubic structure, making it retain this arrangement even when cooled to room temperature. It's for this reason that cubic zirconia in the engineering world is usually referred to as yttria stabilized zirconia, or simply YSZ. Typically around 10% yttria is used for gemstone synthesis. So, now that we know how it's made, we can move on to the more interesting question. What exactly makes cubic zirconia look like diamond? Both are transparent and typically colorless, so the answer lies in what's known as the refractive index. Mathematically, this is defined as the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum versus its phase velocity through the material. This leads to an equation called Snell's Law, but you don't actually need the math to get an intuitive understanding of the refractive index. When light enters material at an angle, the refractive index is basically a measure of how much it gets redirected. Light entering a hypothetical material with a refractive index of 1 will continue on its same direction, since air has a refractive index of very close to 1. But materials with higher refractive indexes will refract it at higher angles, the same equations apply to light exiting the material as well. Light can be refracted again if the angle is steep, but if the angle is a bit closer to parallel, it gets reflected at the boundary. The angle where this transition occurs is known as the critical angle. At angles smaller than this, total internal reflection takes place. Mathematically, this can be found by simply setting the theta 2 as 90 degrees in Snell's law, since that's the definition of light staying in the material, with N1 in this case being the material. Basically, this means that light with a higher index of refraction 
makes the critical angle smaller, making more of the total light reflected within the material. This combination of refraction and internal reflection is what gives diamond its characteristic sparkle. That typical diamond shape you see, it's specifically designed to take advantage of the high refractive index of diamond to redirect incoming light back to your eyes. It's what makes the gemstone shine, and also why jewelry stores usually have obnoxiously bright lights. Cubic zirconia's similarity to diamond comes from its similarly high refractive index. Most transparent liquids or solids are between 1 and 2. Diamond is a very high 2.42, and while cubic zirconia doesn't quite reach that level, it's close enough to create a pretty strong visual similarity, especially in smaller gemstones. But cubic zirconia's interesting properties extend beyond just the optical realm. Obviously, it's not quite as hard as diamond, but it's no slouch, coming in at a solid 8.5 on the Mohs scale. It's also extremely stable at high temperatures and a great thermal insulator. Those properties make cubic zirconia a great choice for thermal barrier coatings in jet engines, where the temperature can reach 2,000 degrees Celsius. See this thing in the jet engine cutaway labeled TGO? That stands for thermally grown oxide. Which oxide? 7 weight percent yttria stabilized zirconia, of course. This engine is the family that's powering the Airbus 380. That's right, the world's largest passenger jet uses the same basic material as your discount jewelry store. The fact that cubic zirconia is a great thermal insulator also helps us solve an interesting problem. How can you tell if that shiny stone you're holding is diamond or zirconia? A professional jeweler can probably spot the difference optically, or by feeling the weight difference in his hand. Zirconia is significantly more dense than diamond. But for those of us who aren't gemstone aficionados, there's another way. Unlike cubic zirconia, diamond is a thermal conductor. If you touch the tip of your tongue to a real diamond that's near room temperature, it should feel cool, like a metal. This is because the outstanding thermal conductivity of diamond is drawing the heat away from your tongue. On the other hand, zirconia is a great thermal insulator. If you touch it to the tip of your tongue, it should feel much warmer, more like glass. So next time you're in that jewelry store, consider giving cubic zirconia a chance to shine. It's beautiful, robust, and since it's a synthetic material, it's also free from the ethical issues that come with buying natural diamonds. Cubic zirconia is more than just fake diamond. It's its own unique and interesting material, with its own story to tell. <laughs>